Of all the characters in Hideo Kojima's iconic series Metal Gear, few are as underappreciated, if you ask me, as a support member from 2001's Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty, Rosemary. This is a brief video on what it is about Rose that's misunderstood. All right, let's go. Jack, do you need to save? After all, I'm just a normal girl who's worried about Jack. Fans were already annoyed at MGS2's infamous bait and switch, which replaced series standby Solid Snake with newcomer Raiden, a far less escapist sort of action protagonist, only roughly an hour into the game. But then came Rose, Jack's girlfriend, who Mission Control bring in, we're told, as a diegetic or literal in the sense of in the game world, last minute replacement this time for the person in charge of saving your game data. Raiden, meet the mission analyst. She'll be overseeing the data saving and support. Why her? Each time that you save the game in Metal Gear Solid 2, at least in the plant chapter, in other words, it's Rose who has to do this reproductive labor for you over and over again. Jack, do you need to save? Hang in there. Jack, tell me you're all right. And even more ironic, which people kind of overlooked, Jack, aka Raiden, isn't any happier to see Rose every time he has to save his game than we are. I can't let myself be overwhelmed by the fear. So, am I a part of what you try not to remember? <laughs> I was just kidding, but I guess this isn't a good time for that. Sometimes it really does bother me. Sometimes I think all you want is a pretty face to accompany you to parties. What are you- Just to make everyone jealous when they see you with me. You're being ridiculous. Jack. What is it? I've always been alone. Huh? I'm so lonely. Lonely? Rose, we've always- Not always. What do you mean? You've never slept beside me. What are you talking about? I- after we've been together in my room, you stay awake all night, or you head for the door. Is this really the time to bring this up? Why, Jack? Why? Listen, Rose, I'm right in the middle of a mission, and I... Why? Why can't you relax when you're with me? Look, the mission, I... Why don't you open up to me? Rose, I, I just can't. All I ever wanted was to share your dreams, to spend a meaningful evening with you. I just wanted to find you by my side when I woke up. Is that asking too much? It's the night. I'm scared of the night. It's got nothing to do with you. Scared of the night? What's that supposed to mean? I can't relax when I'm with someone. Jack, you wouldn't even let me in your room. I need privacy. I just can't be bothered. Bothered? Wrong word. What I wanted to say was that there are certain things that I have to keep to myself. Do you remember that time I forced my way into your room? We'd known each other for almost a year, and you blew up. It was the first time you ever raised your hand against me. I was so worried about you. Look, I'm sorry. It wasn't your violent nature that scared me. It was your room, your heart. Stop it. There wasn't anything in your room. Only a bed and a small desk. It looked like a prison cell. <sighs> Rose? No television set. No family pictures. Not even a poster. Rose, I only use that room for sleeping. A lifeless room. Almost like your empty heart. That's why I tried to keep you out. I thought I was beginning to understand you. Until I saw that room. Would you have been happier if I had a picture of you hanging on the wall? That's not what I was trying to say. Enough, Rose. We'll talk about this later. After the mission. Right. After the mission. I understand. What follows in the game is a kind of multi-layered story, which, like pretty much everything else about MGS2, strongly incentivizes replays. 
while rebuffing attempts at a definitive explanation in every case. As Raiden's mission plays on, we get a better sense of the pair of them as a couple, and at first it's all harmless stuff like jokes about Rose's bad cooking or Jack's impatience. Jack, when you get home, let's have a homecoming party, just the two of us. Yeah, that's a good idea. Hmm, I'll make dinner. Uh, well, well, what's wrong? Well, that sounds good, but how about we eat out at that one restaurant instead? You know, the place that we went to recently with the amazing lobster? I really like that place. Well, yeah, I, I guess that's okay too. Whew. Huh? Uh, nothing. I just love lobster. Yeah, can't wait. Woohoo! Uh, well, then I'll make a reservation. Promise me you'll come back safely. Don't worry. But Rose quickly becomes a key team player, one whose independence and genuine human concern for Jack's well-being the game keeps reminding us of. I think a variety of materials for maintenance of the big shell are stored there. There might be something that would come in handy. Why don't you look around? Jack, snap out of it. Jack, it's me. Rose? You can do this. Trust me. You're up for this. You know that. This is something that our commanding officer, Colonel Campbell, told us would happen from the very start. I have my own reasons for selecting her for this mission, soldier. Colonel, I fail to see... I know your VR training performance in and out, but sometimes that's not enough. You're familiar with the Shadow Moses incident? You know I covered it in VR. If there's a crucial tactical detail that case taught us, it was the power of the operative's will to survive. I was trained to fight. My personal feelings have no place in a mission. We've learned that it doesn't work that way. And on the field, you need all the help you can get. Jack, you're stuck with me whether you like it or not. Rose. Rose will become one of the most important members of your support team, in fact. And as he said at the start of the mission, he has his own reasons for selecting her. Suffice to say, for now, the entire game is one big training kernel, as part of a huge government experiment. I have conditions that need to be met, Colonel. What is it? I'll perform my duties and save that mission data, but I'm aware that technically I'm not part of the mission control team. After all, I'm just a normal girl who's worried about Jack. But that means, Colonel, that I am not required to follow your orders outside of my immediate duties. Jack is not simply a field personnel for me to track. His safety comes first to me, not the mission. And because of that, I will be monitoring and keeping a record of every communication you have with him, Colonel. Given the circumstances, you're free to do what you see fit. Hey, I prefer this to being kept in the dark waiting. day at Federal Hall two years ago, it wasn't a coincidence. I was ordered to keep an eye on you. Keep an eye on me? Yes, by the Patriots. Ever since the game debuted 20 years ago, people have been hating the relationship between Jack and Rose, not to mention Rosemary herself. At the time, it was because military games weren't supposed to, according to conventional wisdom, even have romance plots. And now, she's all too commonly overlooked and unfairly esteemed as just another supposedly poorly written female character in a video game. Well, all this background noise obfuscates what was, I would contend, a major turning point in story-heavy big-name games and character writing. Rose was the culmination of over a decade of work by Kojima and his team on important precursors like Jamie from Snatcher and Karen from Police Knots, not to mention, to say the least, Naomi from Metal Gear Solid 1. But unlike those characters, people seem to uniquely dislike Rose. So why? What is it that people don't like? How do I save the mission data? I've set aside a proprietary frequency for saves and an analyst to work on the data too. Jack, is everything all right? What are you doing here? Jack, can you hear me? Rose, you're not supposed to be involved. What's going on? Jack, I'm a part of this mission. 
Colonel, what the hell is going on? Raiden, meet the mission analyst. She'll be overseeing the data saving and support. Well, Rose is billed as our player character, Jack's girlfriend, of course. Tasked with saving your progress, Rose is most remembered for repeatedly also asking the player about a different sort of memory, what day it is tomorrow. I just switched frequencies. Jack? What? Do you know what day it is tomorrow? April 30th. Is there something special about it? Isn't there? I can't remember. I'm sorry. Oh well. I'll keep trying till I hear the answer. I'm gonna let you go now, Jack. Take care. Somewhat comparable, perhaps, to say Skylar White from AMC's Breaking Bad, on the surface, Rose can seem like the obligatory buzzkill who only swoops in to seemingly divert attention from the main story and onto her domestic squabbles with our protagonist. <sighs> What's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> Don't give me that. Every time you say nothing, it's always something. What's wrong? It doesn't work that way. No one can share the burden of what I've done. It's not one of those warm and fuzzy things couples share. I accept the good and the bad, Jack. That's what you do for someone you love. I don't want to share my past with anyone. I just want to forget about it. Jack, I haven't told you, you know, about what I've done. <sighs> the last two years with you, it's been more than I've ever hoped for. Jack. But I can't go any farther. I know you want to get married. I... But I can't. I can't risk starting a family. There's no way to erase my childhood. <laughs> it's all right, Jack. Please, don't say any more. And yet also like with Skylar, to stop with this impression alone would be a criminal disservice to writing of a decidedly higher caliber than such genre fiction pablum would suggest. In Rosemary's case, the series-wide conceit of espionage, pitting spy against spy, takes on new frontiers, becoming an ironic double commentary on the spy-like attraction and repulsion, the espionage-esque tension of romance itself, which pit couples against each other, risking exposure for the sake of greater connection. For higher privileged access, I guess you could say, to information. In the Bible, after all, sex is referred to as carnal knowledge. <clears throat> anyway, in this sly sort of way, MGS2 utilizes Rosemary to portray the sort of humdrum vapidity, so signature of Hollywood America and its fascination with movies and movie characters are both fundamental to Sons of Liberty. Jack and Rose, a course of nod to the Titanic, turns out really are in an ironic and characteristically fourth wall breaking way of approaching this theme, actors performing parts. Jack has his own reasons for subterfuge, as we'll see. And in the two years since the start of the Truman Show-esque secretly arranged courtship that is their life, it was Rose's mission to make Jack fall in love with her, but soon enough she found that that act started to become real not as a simulation, but as the real thing. In more irony, it is Rosemary, the only actual spy working a case here, who comes to crave an honest connection in the relationship. Throughout MGS2, Rosemary seems like she's playing the role of just Jack's helpmate and lover mommy, poorly or somewhat artificially, but I would argue that's because it's by design. She wants him to see that artifice, to see her, the real her, as she always keeps saying to detect her presence in a deeper and more intimate sense. And yet Raiden, in the end, is the only one totally lying to himself. She wants to be caught, but Raiden doesn't want to admit that she's missing it to begin with, emotionally speaking. Now, a huge part of this is because Raiden is a narcissist. Raiden, there are also reasons behind your selection. Solidus raised plenty of other child soldiers. Do you know why we chose you over them? Hmm. 
It was because you were the only one who refused to acknowledge the past. All the others remember what they were and pay for it daily. But you turn your back on everything you don't like. You do whatever you like, see only the things you like, and for yourself alone. Yes, Rose can attest to that. You refused to see me for what I was. I lied to you, but I wanted to be caught. You pretended to be understanding, to be a gentleman. You never made a conscious attempt to reach out to me. The only time you did was when I gave you no choice but to do so. I was just trying not to... What? Trying not to hurt me? Dear, the one you were trying not to hurt was yourself. Avoiding the truth under the guise of kindness is all that you did. But complicating matters is the one crucial bit of information that Rosemary's been left in the dark over. Namely, that Raiden actually has legitimate reasons for not wanting to face his reality. The Jack she knows, or thinks she does, was once a war-orphaned child soldier in the Devil's Army, Solidus's army, fighting in regional conflicts like the Liberian Civil War. Someone told me that there are over 300,000 children in combat right now. I was just one of them. Left with night terrors and crippling PTSD, Jack never got a chance to develop a real sense of self, and that's what MGS2 is really all about. He's a stranger, not just to Rose, but to himself, too. The catch is that Raiden seems to, at least at the start, genuinely prefer what he knows isn't real over what he's afraid to find out might be, and face that he definitely remembers is. And in exchange for a life of surrogate, surface-level selves, Raiden has evidently given up on self-acceptance or awareness of any sort to become a man alone even in crowds, even with his own loving girlfriend. This preference for the context of no context, as it's been called, by Jack, is signature of the 20th century American mindset. Raiden. Raiden? Strange code name. Makes up for the boring one my parents gave me. Maybe I'll find out someday. In this light, Jack and Rose's relationship sits at the nexus of the nuclear family, evoking very real gender-adjacent issues like domestic abuse, while also critiquing the tacit and unspoken bonds in American culture between civilian, civilized, peaceful life and war, given America remains the largest military power in world history. A topic of no small importance for Metal Gear Solid. Our only goal is to wipe them from the face of the Earth and destroy this world of deceit they have created along with them. You're insane. Insane? We might be the only ones telling the truth. Going all the way back to World War II and its concept of total war, or what the Nazis dubbed worldview warfare, and the Anglosphere, English-speaking world, calls psychological war, America did not ascend the ranks and beat out the competition without a populace at full mobilization. And Rosemary in this brings to mind Rosie the Riveter, that the earliest so-called computers were the women technicians and secretaries involved in the Manhattan Project's data-intensive calculations. In this, MGS2 posits ultimately it is American society, that is, like Raiden, which it tells us he's a stand-in for, somewhat two-faced and how we selectively ignore inconvenient truths. How we're too in love with the sound of our own voice to speak the truth. To prefer, instead, the logic of a Hollywood blockbuster or a nice political speech or piece of propaganda where our genre fiction provided role of the good guy is always preordained. Now, a lot of the genius of Rose is how she interacts with you within the gameplay, gradually leading to one of the most abrupt and mind-blowing tonal shifts in gaming history, at least so far. Her initial performance as the devoted helpmate, one outside the mission parameters but for a last-minute mishap, slowly gives way to more and more 
naked, cold resentment until her role starts to distort entirely, becoming something more honest as it becomes more transparently a mask. With Rose twisting her act into further and further self-parody, a ridiculous spectacle, a demonstration to get Raiden's attention and until she's all but mocking us to our faces. Um, Jack, about trying to break into your room. Rose, just forget about it. No, listen to me. I said I did it because I was worried about you, but it wasn't just that. What? I was suspicious. I thought there might be someone else. Someone else? Another woman. Rose. I really thought so, because sometimes you're so horribly cold. You know I wouldn't. I'm serious. Sometimes I feel like you're pushing me away, so I... Did you get in? Yeah. Are you satisfied now? There wasn't anyone there, was there? No. No, there was no one there. There was absolutely no one in your room. Not another woman, not me, not even you. Rose. I'm sorry. I just wanted to apologize, that's all. Talk to you later. It is at the climactic release of her surrender and self-exposure in the guts of Arsenal Gear near the end when Rose admits everything to us, tells us after having just found out Jack's backstory, Rose dispenses her own debriefing. And as a result, the real Rosemary, the one we thought we knew, disappears. I'm sorry. I know what I did was wrong. No matter where I go, I get used. I reinvented myself to suit your tastes. Hairstyle, clothes, the way I moved, things I talked about. You say you love the color of my hair, my eyes. They're not even real. You must have gone over my psych profile with a fine tooth comb. It was my job. Great performance. Had me completely fooled. What I really wanted was for you to see the real me. It hurt to play out this, this artificial romance. It was worse to lie to myself than to you. The more love you gave me, the more it hurt. Because I knew the person you loved was just a character. So it was artificial on my end too. It was just a game. Not the real thing. Oh, Jack. I feel better knowing that. What? I was in love, or thought I was, with someone who didn't exist. I was trying to be someone I wasn't by loving what wasn't real. I don't know who you really are. The person I knew isn't real. She's not the woman I'm talking to right now. In a sense, the deception was my own, not theirs. Jack, I thought I was acting because that was my job. But I did fall in love with you. That wasn't an act. You expect me to believe that? Ugh. It's okay. You had your reasons, right? Hey, I understand. But I have nothing left to- Jack! What? I'm... I'm carrying... I'm pregnant, Jack. Rose! What's going on? and then literally disappears as a fake AI version, a simulation, one half generated by the proxy AI core, GW, the other half by Raiden's own unconscious memories and fantasies and fears mediated by hallucination directing nanomachines active in his artificial blood and thanks to a high concentration of implants in his cerebral cortex. This rose, that all of that generates is nakedly scornful of us, reflecting back at Raiden in narcissistic fashion, all of his worst insecurities and fears and doubts. Yet she's only telling Raiden a distorted pastiche of things that deep down he already knows. Not to mention the death of Rose. She's wired the same way. Rose, does she actually exist? Of course I do, Jack. You have to believe me. Damn! It will be a fight to the death. In the end, Raiden finally sees the real Rose, the one behind, as it were, the mirror. Not as the empowered female TM that he likes to be seen dating, not as the 1950s housewife archetype 
that she wooed him by impersonating, and not even as the femme fatale spy, the bitch who betrayed him by ironically refusing to live his lie. No, none of those roses. But as the individual all along that Raiden really hadn't even noticed that he was ignoring and leaving out. Just as to the American public, women and children as part of civilian peaceful society don't count as acceptable targets in war, just as the American military has grown fat by selling the world the Hollywood fiction of a cleaner, safer battlefield, wars fought on humanitarian grounds, Jack has convinced himself he'll never be at fault in the relationship, provided he did the thing in question for the so-called right reasons. Rose's AI will come to explain to him that what he's told himself was all for her sake was just a shield, and actually was just a way of covering up his own misdeeds, his own awareness of them. There's pain sensation in VR and even a sense of reality and urgency. The only difference is it isn't actually happening. That's the way they want you to think. What? Trying not to hurt me? Dear, the one you were trying not to hurt was yourself. Avoiding the truth under the guise of kindness is all that you did. To repeat of the same sin you see that he already was making by turning his back on his own past. And in this, Raiden developed a tendency of disavowing responsibility, not just to Rose, but to everything in his life, with her as the symbolic center of that. Though evoking her name, in reality what Raiden chose to ignore was that in the end, all he was looking out for was himself, and the events of MGS2 are what bring him to this realization. Rose is just his shield, which Raiden is convinced is really some kind of mirror. All this subtle, casual egotism and even arguably borderline sexism. I was serious when I said I wanted you to propose to me. Rose? I was really worried. There are times when it seems like you're not really looking at me and that if I looked away for a moment, you'll disappear. I wanted to make sure you couldn't get away. I thought that if we lived together, maybe things would change. That maybe we could change things ourselves. <sighs> But that wasn't the problem. There was something deeper. I'm sorry. I guess it's impossible for me. W what are you saying? I'm sorry, Jack. I love you. I really do. Please believe me. Whatever happens. Rose? Bye, Jack. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready to turn in a save. The proprietary save frequency is 140.96. Jack, is that you? What can I do for you, Jack? What can I do for you, Jack? Jack, do you remember what day tomorrow is? That again. I'm sorry, but I still don't have a clue. That's okay. Rosemary deserves more praise as an important character in the history of this medium. She is the keeper of our game data, but she is also the one memory of yesterday Jack has that's actually worth remembering, and is only shot, for that matter, at a genuine future worth living for. Until next time, boss. See me for what I am, okay? I know. Do you remember this place? Of course. This is where we first met. I remember now. Hmm? Today is the day I met you. <laughs> That's it. I think I found something to pass along to the future. What? He said all living things want their genes to live on. Are you talking about the baby? Yeah. 
But genes aren't the only thing you pass on. There are too many things that aren't written into our DNA. It's up to us to teach that to our children. What kind of things? About the environment, our ideas, our culture, poetry, compassion, sorrow, joy. We'll tell them everything together. Is that a proposal? This is for your ears.